Today, on Commitment to Truth. Stop blaming it on mom. Stop blaming it on dad. Stop blaming it on the ball. Stop blaming it on our government. Stop blaming it on everyone else but you, me, us. Stan! Welcome to Commitment to Truth, the teaching ministry of Commitment Church, a place for all nations. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Each week, Pastor Cedric Brown and the pastoral team at Commitment Church strive to draw you into a deeper relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, we continue a series titled, In Awe. Because our lives can be very hectic, we often forget to spend time thinking about how awesome the God we worship really is. Spending time thinking about and just being in awe of our God can help to revitalize our relationship with Him. This week, Pastor Cedric Brown will continue to teach us how we can be in awe of God. Through considering Him and acknowledging Him in all of our ways, and by living a life that consistently resists sin, no matter the cost. Here is Pastor Cedric, lead pastor of Commitment Church, with today's message. All right, so we have been uh, in a new sermon series I've entitled for you, In Awe. Now, the purpose of this sermon is to series is to encourage the body of Christ to live in reverent service and awe of God. To live in reverent service and in awe of a holy God. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 26 through 29 is our foundational text, and it says this. And his voice shook the earth then, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This expression, yet once more, denotes the removal of those things which can be shaken as of created things, so that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Verse 28, it says this, Therefore, since we've received a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude by which we may offer to God an acceptable service with reverence and awe. Listen to what verse 29 says. For our God is a consuming fire. So we have a key verse in within these verses, and that's verse uh, number 28. And here are some key words that are also our foundation. You have the word receive, and it says, since we receive what? A kingdom. So this word receive means to continuously receive. We are receiving, and we are receiving, and we continue to receive uh, this kingdom. Remember, uh, there's a theological term which is called progressive sanctification. In other words, when you come to know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you are immediately sanctified and set apart for good works, right? But yet, there's this progressive sanctification. In other words, you know, listen, we live in a corrupt world. We live in a corrupt society. And the reality is there's this responsibility to be progressively set apart, progressively set apart until you see him face to face. So progressive sanctification is simply this. Once you're saved, set up, saved, you're set apart, sanctified, but you're progressively being sanctified. But when you see him face to face, your sanctification is then what? Complete, right? So therefore, this kingdom work that he does within us, it also has this kingdom a progressive revelation. In other words, you come to know Jesus Christ, who is the king of the kingdom, right? But you know it as well as I do, there's this responsibility to continue to draw closer and closer to the king and also uh, apply the kingdom works over and over and over again in situations and circumstances of life, right? So this, this kingdom is receiving ongoingly. Then it says, let's show gratitude or let's show means to let's wear, let's possess, let's hold on to oneself gratitude. Hold on to yourself this gratitude that is associated with this king, with this new, uh, this king, with this new kingdom, right? But then we also have the word gratitude, which is grace and thanksgiving to God. So holding on to thanksgiving and holding on to this grace of God, which is associated with this new kingdom that we're a part of. Last few words, reverence means this. It means a discretion, this caution, this piety, this modesty, this, this reverence because good is good. Remember we talked about that last week. In other words, we serve a good God who is good, what? All the time, right? So good is good. Good doesn't have to, and I use the word gooder, and there's no 
such thing, but gooder, good gets gooder, <laughs> right? At the end of the day, God only gets better, right? The more and more you understand him, the more and more you, you get close to him, he gets better and better and better um, um, because of this understanding and this revelation of him. Last word I want to just highlight is the word awe. Uh, in, the, in the Greek, it means this godly fear, this godly fear that we all have. But many times when we think of godly fear, it, there's this, like, I'm afraid of you, God, right? It's like, I'm so afraid of you, I don't want to even get close to you. But honestly, this godly fear is very attractive. It should be attractive. It should be drawing us in and luring us in even closer to him because godly fear as we're going to learn more and more in this series, is not merely just, you know, afraid of dad because what dad can do. But really, when you look at God's fear, it's I'm afraid because of what he doesn't do and he could do. He doesn't give us what we justly deserve. So we live in this world which can be shaken, but we're part of this kingdom that would never, ever, ever ever absolutely never be shaken amen? amen so let us hold on to this so if you can open your bibles to hebrews uh, chapter 12 we're going to be in two key verses hebrews 12 verse 30 uh, verse 3 pardon me and 4 and then some other peripheral verses so we've been answering the question how do we live in awe of god how do we live in awe of god as a quick review we found out in verses 1 and 2 these points. We must live like the heroes of the faith. In other words, we need to become modern-day heroes of the faith ourselves. Just as they were heroes and were willing to die for the promise that was to come, we have the promise that is already here, and we need to begin to live like modern-day heroes. Number two, we realize that these modern-day heroes cannot live lives that are tangled so we must live untangled lives, right, as good soldiers of the Lord that, that Jesus Christ enlisted us through his finished work. We must live untangled lives. Thirdly, we realize that these, these uh, heroes of the faith, or we as heroes of the faith, must live with great endurance. Great endurance in the faith. And then lastly, we uncovered last week that we must live with our eyes focused on Christ and Christ alone. We look into the hills from which our strength comes from, and it comes from who? Uh, the Lord. Amen? So again, let's look at verse number three and four for today's uh, answer to the question, how do we live in awe of God? And honestly, I only have two questions, but we're going to dig deeper into these two, que two, two answers to this question, and we're going to dig deep into these uh, answers. Verse three says this, for consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Verse 4, you have not resisted to the point of shedding of blood in your striving against sin. Well, I know I haven't. Here's our first answer uh, for today. How do we live in awe of God? It begins this way. We must live in consideration of him consideration of him meaning Christ now that may seem to be very elementary but here's the deal I think if we're all honest today who do we normally live in consideration of but but we get real creative like this so we I will live in consideration of my wife when it benefits me <laughs> right I'll, I'll live in consideration of my children when it benefits me. In other words, as long as they're obeying me and doing everything I want them to do, as long as everything is in order, right? I'm living in consideration of my children. But once they start rebelling, then you see how much you're really living in consideration of yourself. You follow me? So the bottom line is, at the end of the day, our sinful, selfish nature it's always about me. And wanting to tell, uh, tell, tell signs is simply when that person that you serve, that you do, what you do for, begins to change their mind towards you, you begin to change your mind towards them.
right? Happens all the time with new jobs, right? You go to that new job and you're excited and you're up early and you're, you're vested. And then once they pass you over on a promotion and once they don't give you that pay increase that you need and desire, then you start shopping for a new one. Every scenario in life. We live in consideration of ourselves. So therefore, no matter how elementary it sounds, we must be reminded, if we're going to live in awe of God, it has to always be in consideration of Him. Influencing your world. Have you ever wondered why you were born where you were born? Why this family? Why this particular community? Why this part of the world? Why do I have these friends? Why this school at this time? Why this church? It's simple. God through His sovereign wisdom, He knows precisely what you need to fulfill His purposes in you for His glory. You can purchase this book and others by Cedric Brown at cedricbrown.com. The word consider here in verse 3 means this. Consider accurately and distinctly. Or listen to what it says. This is so sweet. It says, or again and again. You see, so many times we, we're one and done. Right. In other words, <laughs> in other words, we we live in consideration of, of him today. When things are good. Situations change, environment changes, and then I have to reconsider, am I going to live in consideration of him again? So, so so there is this responsibility to live in consideration of him again and again and again, and again. The definition also goes on to be defined this way, is to ponder. I think to live in consideration of Jesus, there is this ongoing need to ponder him. In other words, so many times we forget what he has already done for us. We forget his goodness. We forget his grace. We forget his tolerance towards us. And we need to stop and ponder his goodness. So consider accurately and distinctly or again and again to ponder. So consider him who has endured. Think think about this. He endured such hostility towards him. Why? For us. The word hostility means this opposition, contradiction of what he has said or who he is. So he he has continued to die for us and sacrifice for us with the, the clear understanding that there will be people who are completely opposed to him, yet he went to the cross. Last couple of words. Therefore, here's our response to him. Don't lose heart. Don't lose heart. The word lose here means this. It's spoken of your mind because that's where we first break down. The first place we break down is in our thinking towards him. So it says don't lose heart first uh, in your mind. In other words, don't start weakening or relaxing or tiring out in your mind. First thing that goes. It also means to become faint-hearted, which that's why this second word connected to losing heart. Don't lose heart. Don't become fainted. Don't become relaxed in your heart. The heart is, listen to this, that's your soul, the immaterial part of you. That's that seed of your feelings, your affections, your passions, which first starts where? In your mind. That's why you have marketing commercials, because they're trying to capture your mind, which captures your feelings and captures your emotions, captures your soul, and then you go out and buy. That's why Burger King shows you his, their burger, burgers on, com- on the commercial, and it just looks so desirous, and Chick-fil-A and all these other wonderful places that we eat, right? Because ultimately, if they can com- capture your feelings, your desires, your affections, they capture you on the inside, and then you go out, we go out, we go out and buy. Make sense? So the challenge we face is, is that if I am going to be 
a man or woman who are all, who's always considering Christ, I must understand that there's this responsibility to always have my mind and my heart and my soul completely fixated on Jesus. He's the end game. Let's look at Philippians chapter 3, verses 4 through 16, just to hammer this home just a little bit further. Verse 7 and 8 gives us this consideration. In other words, consider, considering Christ is this willingness to lose everything for the sake of Christ, for the value of knowing Christ and gaining Christ. Isn't that always the tension in life? Will I, will I ultimately be willing to lose everything to have more of him? Philippians 3, 7 and 8 says this. But whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. For the sake of Christ. Not for the sake of anyone else, but for the sake of whom? Christ. More than that. Now it's like, how could it be more than that, right? It says, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them but rubbish so that I may gain Christ. And this word rubbish means loosely dung. You can, you can define that a little further. So here you find that there's this, this ultimate want, willingness to just lose everything. And everything in my life is but in light of whom? Christ. Then you also find in verses of 5 through 7, this re, excuse me, verses 9 through 14, pardon me, is this the consideration of Christ is this willingness to press towards the goal of Christ. So you're willing to lose everything for Christ, but you're willing to just press on and press on and press through to ultimately gain Christ all the more. Listen to what it says. Again, verses 9 through 14, it says, And may be found in him, not having any righteousness of my own, derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death in order that I may attain to the resurrection from the dead, not that I've already attained it it or have been already become perfect, but I press on so that I may lay hold of that for which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, I forget what lies behind and I reach towards and forward to, the, to what lies ahead. I press on towards the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. End of the day, the goal is who? Is it making more sense as we drill down further, right? But then you also look lastly at verse 15 and 16. This considering the Christ is also the willingness to maintain the standard. So think about this. So I come to my senses in my mind and I understand that nothing in this world compares to Christ. So if nothing in this world compares to Christ, so I will then pursue everything that pertains to who? Christ. And once I pursue everything that pertains to Christ, then my responsibility is to maintain the standard of who? Considering him. Everything I do, I'm maintaining the standard of Christ. Look at verse 15 to 16. Again, Philippians 3. Let us, therefore, as many as are perfect, have this attitude or this heart. And if anything, you have a different attitude, of God will reveal that also to you. And he does, doesn't he? However, let us keep living by 
that same standard to which we have attained. And this standard comes from a Greek word. If you, if you are old enough to remember the typewriter, do you remember when the key used to get stuck? And therefore, you know, you, every time you type K, it's like, dang, I got to keep typing K. Same thought, continuous blow. You keep pushing the key, you keep pushing the key until eventually Christ shows up. It's the standard. Yeah, one day you're going to fail in marriage. Yes, one day you're going to fail parenting. Yes, one day you're going to fail being a a child of someone's parent. You're going to fail, but you keep pressing the key. You keep pressing the key until the standard of Christ is so embedded within your mind and your soul that it becomes your first nature, not your second nature. How do we live in awe of him? Live considering him. Ultimately considers Christ again and again and again and again until it becomes so much a part of who you are. Amen? Hello, my name is Sarah Vega, and I am the Administrative and Executive Director here at Commitment Church. I hope you've enjoyed today's message by Pastor Cedric Brown. If you didn't know, Pastor Cedric also sends out encouraging videos weekly. We call these the Weekly Wire. We can send these encouraging videos directly to you by subscribing at www.loveallnations.org. Here's an example of the encouragement you'll receive. A problem with losing control or losing your composure, or maybe the other side of the coin is that you have a problem with being in control of people and situations that are important to you. Well, there's a Bible verse that says this, like a city without walls and broken into, it's like a man who has no control over his spirit. In other words, I think this verse is saying to you and I, whenever we want to be in control, whenever we are out of control, it's because we have not given up all control to the one who deserves it completely. And that is, we must become men and women who realize whenever we are at that brink of being in control or out of control, that we give up control to God. In other words, He is the only one that can protect us when we feel vulnerable and out of control. He's the only one that can manage the hearts of people that we want to control and even manage the situations that we want to be in control of. So again, the next time that you or I want to be in control of people and situations or we are out of control because we have not given all control and complete control to the one who deserves all control. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. We hope you enjoyed the sample of our Weekly Wire. Again, to subscribe to your weekly inspiration, refreshment, and encouragement, please visit www.loveallnations.org. Thank you again for listening to our series, In Awe, From Commitment to Truth, the teaching ministry of Commitment Church, a place for all nations. Hebrews 12.28 says, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace, by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Throughout this series, we hope you are reminded how awesome our God is whom we serve and worship, and that you are encouraged to have a life of worship for our Lord. If you want to listen to the previous messages in this series, or if you want to hear messages from other series, visit Commitment Church on YouTube or Pastor Cedric Brown on Spotify, Pandora, or other podcast providers. You can also visit us on our website, commitmentchurch.org. And if you live in the Philadelphia, Delaware, or South Jersey area, we would love to see you in person as well. You can attend any of our services by visiting us at 2 Berlin Road South, Lindenwald, New Jersey, 08021. Thank you again for listening, and have a blessed and wonderful day.